you want. Wow, how about that? Anywhere you are. There's literally nothing like this in the world. Support your PBS station and get Passport, your ticket to the best of PBS. BBC World News was presented by KCET Los Angeles. Tonight at 7 on Arizona PBS. Explore new ideas and new worlds here on Arizona PBS, a community service of Arizona State University. Arizona PBS programming is brought to you in part by the underwriting support of local businesses. Learn how you can support Arizona PBS and grow your own business by reaching viewers like you. Call 602-496-8664 or azpbs.org slash underwriting. Coming up next on Arizona PBS, life and world. Hi, Michael Crow here, President of ASU. Everyone should know that lifelong learning is going to be an essential ingredient to you and your family's success. I'm really proud that Arizona PBS and Arizona State University are working together in every possible way to make certain that you, through the PBS uh, network here and our station here, can have access to all that you need to move your family forward in terms of gaining access to learning over your entire lifetime. No matter what your age, no matter where you are, no matter where you're sitting, no matter what you're doing, we are here for you, and we're really excited about that. Coming soon to Arizona PBS. The dark skies that we see are the same dark skies that we as humanity evolved with. The dark sky is something that I grew up with. I could see the Milky Way from my backyard, and I can't do that anymore. They see the moon, perhaps two or three stars, but they never look up. The future of the dark sky looks a little, little grim to me, personally. Monday at 11.30 on Arizona PBS. Support for Arizona PBS comes from viewers like you and from... Friendship Village Tempe, a retirement community for over 30 years, offers independent living with residency options, lifelong learning classes, as well as continuing care. Information at friendshipvillageaz.com. From the Cronkite Studios in downtown Phoenix, this is Cronkite News. With one of Arizona senators leaving and another wanting to leave, there's a chance that Arizona could be sending two freshman senators to Washington in January, what that means for our state's influence in Congress. Republican governors from across the country held their annual conference in Scottsdale. We talked to them about border security and other issues tonight. And early onset Alzheimer's is on the rise, but financial support and knowledge isn't. We talked to people who have been diagnosed. Cronkite News starts now. Good evening and welcome to Cronkite News on Arizona PBS. I'm Samantha Lomibau. And I'm John Cardinelli. Thank you for joining us. President Trump's former attorney, Michael Cohen, has pleaded guilty to making false statements to Congress in 2017. Cohen admitted to lying to the U.S. Senate Intelligence Committee about plans to build a Trump Tower in Moscow, Russia. The charge to which he pleaded carries a maximum sentence of five years in prison, a maximum fine of $250,000, and supervised release of no more than three years. President Trump commented on Cohen's plea deal. He's a weak person. And by being weak, unlike other people that you watch, uh, he's a weak person, and what he's trying to do is get a reduced sentence. So he's lying about a project that everybody knew about. Cohen's sentencing has been set for December 12th. Just hours after Cohen's plea, President Trump abruptly announced he would be canceling his meeting with Russian leader Vladimir Putin, citing Russia's seizure of Ukrainian vessels. Trump tweeted, based on the fact that the ships and sailors have not been returned from to Ukraine from Russia, I have decided it would be best for all parties concerned to cancel my previously scheduled meeting in Argentina with President Vladimir Putin. A look 
forward to a meaningful summit again as soon as the situation is resolved. This wasn't the only formal meeting the White House canceled today. They also chose not to go through with meetings with countries South Korea and Turkey as well. Trump departed to the G20 summit in Argentina today. Trump will still speak to all leaders attending as a whole during the summit. The Senate Judiciary Committee canceled its vote today on more than 20 federal judge nominations because of Arizona's own Senator Jeff Flake. Flake has been in a standoff with top Republican leaders over special counsel Robert Mueller's protection. Flake has said he will not vote on any judicial nominations until Senate Majority Leader Mitch McConnell agrees to hold a Senate floor vote on the special counsel bill. You know, when this bill passed out of the Judiciary Committee, uh, a bipartisan vote of 14 to 7, uh, the majority leader said at that time, there's no worry, nobody's being fired, uh, the president's not going to fire Mueller. Well, now the attorney general has been fired, and uh, someone who's been installed who has expressed hostility toward the Mueller probe, and he is now ha has oversight for that probe. So I don't know why we aren't more concerned here. I really don't. The judiciary panel has an 11 to 10 Republican majority. Without Flake's vote, they won't be able to advance the nominations. The clock is ticking on Flake's resolution and on Flake's time in the Senate. He will step down when the current Congress ends in a few weeks. Ian Solomon in our Washington Bureau tells us what that could mean for Arizona. Between the retirement of Jeff Flake and the August death of Senator John McCain, Arizona's presence in Washington is in for a big change. He said Arizona loses a lot when it loses a John McCain. You not only have a chairman of an important committee, uh, Armed Services, but somebody who has a lot of respect from his colleagues. And when he spoke, people listened. And that meant that Arizona's interests were protected. McCain had more than 30 years in the Senate. And while his replacement, Senator John Kyle, had 18 years of experience before returning, he is not committed to continuing into the new year. Uh, there's a real question mark about who replaces him and whether it's somebody who can quickly get the attention and respect in the Senate. Elaine Kamark of the Brookings Institution says that whoever comes in will not be high on the Senate totem pole. Well, they probably won't be committee chairman, okay, because they are freshmen. However, that doesn't mean a freshman like Senator-elect Kirsten Sinema can't get the job done. She's clearly a very serious legislator, and uh, hitting that ground running is going to be an important thing for her. She has an advantage, I think, uh, with the experience that she's had. In the Senate especially, um, the members are more or less equal. And so it's a smaller body and two new freshmen from Arizona. My guess is they will certainly be able to get done what they need to get done for the state. Whether Kyle decides to stay or not, Ornstein said that the playing field has changed for Arizona. It won't be quite the same as it was when you had McCain and Flake. In Washington, Ian Solomon, Cronkite News. As tension and unrest rise at the southern border, Arizona Border Patrol and the military are running joint readiness exercises to prepare for the possible migrants who may try to seek asylum. In Mexico, Central American migrants, mostly from Honduras, try to seek asylum from their home countries. Even after hundreds of migrants were tear gassed at the border, following altercations with border security just days ago number did double from 2017 to 2018 from 12,847 to over 26,000. So a big training that uh, is taking place down at the ports is you know the mobile field force training, uh, the training that our agents, specific agents will get in dealing with large crowds. Today it was announced that no criminal charges were enacted on arrested migrants who crossed the border illegally Sunday. Meanwhile, the Valley is hosting the annual Republican Governors Association Conference, an opportunity for Republican governors, lobbyists, and supporters to get together and talk strategy and funding. Cronkite News reporter Alexa Avila was there and asked Governor Doug Ducey about what's happening at the border and Arizona's business relationship with Mexico. We're having a humanitarian crisis south of the border. We're also having a security crisis south of the border. So. Governor Doug Ducey addressing the situation at the border while at the Republican Governors Association Conference in Scottsdale Wednesday. Ducey making it clear he'll do what's necessary to keep Arizona's southern border boundary as safe as possible. We're still going to continue to focus on border security in the in the state of Arizona. When we talk about some of the negative things that are happening on the border, like I said, drug trafficking, human smuggling, child sex trafficking, this is, uh, this is the responsibility of the Governor. People in our state uh, were willing to look beyond party lines, 
The annual conference gathers Republican governors to collaborate and discuss their plan for their state. The Republican Governors Association is dedicated to one primary objective, electing and financially supporting Republican governors and candidates during their campaigns. The RGA contributed $8 million to Ducey's re-election campaign, money spent primarily on attack ads against his Democratic opponent, David Garcia. David Garcia is too extreme to be governor. The campaigns matter and uh, the RGA was certainly a critical part of, of our campaign. While health care, the economy, and tax regulations were discussed, border security was at the forefront of the conversation. Republican Texas Governor Greg Abbott says the constituent shared many of the concerns when it comes to border safety. They expect the border to be secure, and they are fed up uh, with a country that has done, done an inadequate job of securing the border. Trade was also top of mind for Governor Ducey, who once again highlighted Arizona's business relationship with our neighbor to the south. Governor Doug Ducey says that maintaining a strong relationship with Mexico will ensure a better future for Arizona. We can do this and enforce public safety while build our trade relationship uh, at the ports, trade, trucking, transit, tourism, the things that benefit both our, our states and both our countries, and we're going to continue to do that. In Scott Still, Alexa Avila, Cronkite News. Less than one month after the election, Republican Martha McSally's campaign released a memo explaining her loss to Democrat Kirsten Cinema. The McSally campaign cited reasons including a contested primary, President Trump's low approval rating amongst moderate Republicans, and being outspent by the Cinema campaign by nearly seven million dollars. It's been a month since the deadly anti-Semitic mass shooting in Pittsburgh that rocked its community and the country. Since then, tens of thousands of people have banded together in a campaign to raise money for the victims, organized by a former ASU student. Washington reporter Lillian Donahue spoke with the man behind a million-dollar campaign. Shea Kateri believes in the power of community, and even though Pittsburgh is not his own, he knew he had to do something after a gunman opened fire last month in the Tree of Life synagogue there, killing 11 people. I thought to myself that if I set up a GoFundMe, uh, there's nothing to lose from doing it, but if it raises 500 or 700 dollars, it's still a little money, better than nothing. It turned out to be a lot better than nothing. People from around the world poured $1.2 million into the GoFundMe account Kateri set up for those affected. It was a, a light in the darkness of a lot of challenging days that we had to see that people would reach out to the way they had and help us when we were busy dealing with funerals and, and the losses that we had. Kateri immigrated to the U.S. from Iran five years ago, fleeing violence. He attended Arizona State University and is now at Johns Hopkins in Washington, D.C. Being in Arizona for four years, I was exposed to a communitarian life that why community matters. It's that shared community that he learned in Arizona that prompted him to start the campaign. Now neighbors here in Washington, D.C. are taking notice. D.C. resident Mike Silverstein said he grew up going to the Tree of Life Synagogue. After hearing about Shay's efforts, he reached out, forming a friendship following tragedy. What I've learned from Shay and what I've been reminded is that we shouldn't be viewing people as what they are, but rather who they are as people. Kateri says he feels pride in the United States. Somewhere neighbor will help neighbor, online and in person. I never felt like home until I moved here. He says he has spoken briefly with those at the synagogue and hopes to visit Pittsburgh in December. Pittsburgh is not my immediate community, but it's part of my country, and my country is my community at large. In Washington, Lillian Donahue, Cronkite News. Shockner says the congregation plans to use the funds to support the victims' families and rebuild the synagogue. Alzheimer's is the sixth leading cause of death in the nation, but there's a lack of funding put into finding a cure. Coming up on Cronkite News, we talk to those dealing with the diagnosis at a much earlier age than expected. Plus, a new report suggests syphilis is approaching outbreak proportions. Stay in the know, on the go. At Cronkite News, we work hard to report the facts and keep you updated, whether we're on set, or on the scene. Taking it from the studio to the field. So I'm here in South Phoenix. In Phoenix, we're just a click away. 
Follow us on Facebook and Twitter, or find us online at cronkitenews.azpbs.org. With wildfires, a scarcity of water, and other environmental issues facing the Earth today, it's critical to stay up to date with local impacts of a changing climate. That's why we created Elemental, covering sustainability, a multimedia collaboration between public television and radio stations. From climate change to water conservation to renewable energy and much more, Elemental covers the latest in sustainability news. Find our stories on our website, elementalreports.com. While you may think of Alzheimer's as a disease that only the elderly get, more and more people are being diagnosed with early onset Alzheimer's. According to the CDC, death rates from Alzheimer's have increased significantly for those aged 15 to 64, and they've actually decreased for those 65 and over. And while the rates are rising, the support and information about it isn't. We talked with those diagnosed with early onset at the walk to end Alzheimer's. Last year during the summertime, I was driving and I just completely forgot what I was doing, where I was going, what was going on. I, I had no clue. Casa Grande resident Melissa Temple is currently in the process of being diagnosed with early onset Alzheimer's. Death rates for early onset Alzheimer's have increased more than 10 percent from 2015 to 2016. First of all, the younger onset isn't understood very well, and I would really love more research into the younger, the earlier onset Alzheimer's, because it's, there's a lot of stigma to it, and when I tell people that I suspect I have it, and they're working on diagnosing me with it, they're like, you can't, you're too young. Temple's mother and grandmother were both diagnosed with Alzheimer's. I've been working as a CNA my whole adult working life with Alzheimer's and dementia people, plus taking care of my grandmother and my mom, so I know what I'm in for. Phoenix resident Dave Simmons was officially diagnosed with Alzheimer's last year, but his wife Kathy Simmons had seen a change in him before his diagnosis. I noticed symptoms probably about 10 years before that, but he was reluctant to go to a doctor. Simmons says he hasn't only been losing his memory, but also his ability to do his favorite hobbies. So far, not being able to do it again. I used to deer hunt. Can't. Simmons says that the lack of attention to early onset Alzheimer's is a problem. It's not just in the elderly. I mean, when I started noticing it in Dave, he was in his 50s. You know, so you have to understand that it's not just older people. There's many people out there. Phoenix resident Lisa Serino was diagnosed two years ago with early onset Alzheimer's. She and her boyfriend say they are frustrated with the lack of information provided for this type of the disease. Lisa's 60 years old, I'm 55, and there's simply not enough information or support groups for people that are suffering from Alzheimer's that are under 65 years of age. Alzheimer's is much more than memory loss. It changes your entire life. For me, the hardest part is I can't cook anymore. And I was a good cook before I got this. Serino says she wants to see a change. To have people recognize it, it's real, and that's it. In the United States, up to 5% of more than 5 million Americans have early onset Alzheimer's. There is currently a statewide outbreak of syphilis in Arizona. Reporter Tania Williamson found out ways that medical professionals are working to keep the disease from spreading. The state of Arizona is currently facing an outbreak of syphilis. The sexually transmitted disease can be treated, but oftentimes can go unnoticed by those who have it. It is known as the great imitator, and a lot of times people may not even know or have signs that they're infected at certain times during the infection. That's why it's really important for them to have those conversations with their health care provider so that they can be tested for STDs when it's appropriate and at regular intervals. 
Since January of this year, the Department of Health Services says more than 600 cases of women having syphilis have been recorded. Women who are pregnant run the risk of passing the disease to their babies. What was also concerning is the number of babies that were being born infected with syphilis. Um, we had over a 100% increase um, from last year in the number of deaths. We've had over 40 cases of congenital syphilis, and eight of those have died. And compared to the numbers that we saw last year, that is a vast increase. The Arizona Department of Health Services recommends that people use condoms during every sexual encounter, reduce their number of sexual partners, and to get tested regularly for STDs. Having those candid conversations with their health care providers and making sure that if they do identify an infection and they receive treatment to complete treatment. In Phoenix, Tania Williamson, Cronkite News. Early detection and treatment can be extremely helpful in preventing lifelong health problems and death. The cool weather here in the valley makes it perfect for being outside. Coming up on Cronkite News, find out what the Tempe Police Department is doing to make public parks safer for the community this fall. We're going to have some rain coming up this tonight and this weekend, so get ready for that. I'll have more after the break. As journalists at Cronkite News, we report on stories that matter to you by focusing on the local impact. We dig deeper and work tirelessly to keep you informed. Live in Wickerburg. Live in Los Angeles. In Cleveland. In Washington. In Louisville. From Jerusalem. Live in Philadelphia. From around the world to right here in Phoenix. At Cronkite News, we report the facts and stick to the truth. Tempe police are training private security guards to patrol city parks. Cammie Clark explains how city officials are trying to cut down on vandalism and disorderly behavior. Tempe officials say they want to keep parks safe for families and residents. Private security guards are patrolling several Tempe parks in a pilot program to stop unruly behavior and graffiti. People need to feel like they can they can trust other people to you know maintain uh, the. Um, the area and that they can have things out that are fun for everyone to use and reuse. So um, I do, I see it being um, really important that people uh, really just share and respect the community altogether. Tempe police are training security guards on how to enforce park rules, like not using firearms and how to identify someone with mental health issues. Well, I think this training absolutely addresses mental health concerns, mental health crisis, mental health awareness. It teaches empathy as well and how to connect with them, how to engage them. Calls to Tempe police from city parks have increased this year. There have been more than 6,600 so far this year, compared to more than 5,200 for all of 2017. Commander Michael Horn says while data showed the parks had a relatively low crime rate, a survey showed residents felt there were safety concerns. And people were expressing either through calls for service or uh, interaction with our what's called council communicators, messages to the city or community meetings, just really expressing frustration at times that they were sensing sometimes increased drug usage, uh, damage happening in the parks, uh, unsanitary use of some of the water features. Tempe resident Jesse Finney says that he wants a safe place for his kids to play. I'm a stay-at-home dad and uh, to be able to come here and um, you know just to even give us an hour uh, out of our day and, and uh, break up the monotony of, of sitting at home and coloring or doing something um, is really important. Funding for the park security patrols will end in July unless city officials decide that the program is successful enough to continue. In Tempe, Cami Clark, Cronkite News. According to Commander Horn, two private security guards will be patrolling each park in Tempe through the course of the program. Sammy, you know, it's been really chilly and overcast lately. It definitely has. Let's check in with Micah at the Weather Center to see what we can expect across the state. Micah? 
Across the state, we can expect some pretty cool temperatures. Right now, we're at 67 here in Phoenix, so it feels amazing outside. Let's take a look at our evening planner. That's going to change a little bit tonight. We're going to experience some rain. By 10 o'clock, we're going to experience a 100% chance of rain. So make sure you guys have your umbrellas so you don't ruin any plans if you plan to be out late tonight. Looking at our high temperatures for tomorrow, it'll be another cool day. 64 in Phoenix, up north, 51 in Page, and out in the west in the mid-high 60s. So it's definitely time for you guys to use those warm fall weather clothing that you have been waiting to use all year. Low temperatures, 48 in Phoenix for tomorrow, 33 in Page, 20 in the Grand Canyon. So be careful out there if you plan on hiking and spending some time outdoors, make sure you're bundled up. This weekend, we'll experience a cold front just a little bit, experience some temperatures in the 60s, and then we'll go up into the 70s by Wednesday and drop right back down. In the Cronkite Weather Center, Micah Bledsoe. One in 59 children in the U.S. have been diagnosed with autism, a developmental disorder. Coming up on Cronkite News, we talk to an organization that uses tennis as a learning tool for kids with autism. If you're looking for one show that tells you what happened that day in the world of business, it's NBR. We saw a classic chip wreck. Nordstrom's opening stores. Triple digit gains. Crude climbs. We're there to help our audience find new investment ideas. The market still has room to go up. Nightly Business Report is the longest running business television program in history. Weeknights at 1030 on Arizona PBS. Join us each week on Catalyst, the show that explores new advancements, technologies, and innovations at Arizona State University that are shaping the future for tomorrow and beyond. Catalyst, Wednesdays at 9, right here on Arizona PBS. I'm Matt Barry, ESPN Sports Center anchor and graduate of ASU's Walter Cronkite School of Journalism and Mass Communication. With its bachelor's and master's degrees in sports journalism, the Cronkite School is preparing the next generation of sports journalists to tell stories that matter, stories that excite, inspire, and inform. Cronkite immerses students in covering sports at all levels in one of the country's top sports markets. It's this hands-on experience under the guidance of award-winning sports media veterans that shape the top journalist of tomorrow. Millions of people die every year from drinking dirty water. I would never have felt I had the ability to do something without ASU pushing me. We built filtration systems out of local materials with the people. To see those kids drink clean water for the first time, it's the most rewarding feeling that you can ever have. I went to ASU because I wanted to change the world. The thing I never would have expected is how the world would have changed me. According to the CDC, 1 in 59 children in the U.S. are diagnosed with autism, making it the most prevalent developmental disorder in the nation. Reporter Ashley Mackey takes a look at how an organization in the Valley is using tennis as a learning tool for children on the spectrum. According to the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, autism spectrum disorder is a developmental disability that can cause social, communication, and behavioral challenges. People with ASD may communicate, behave, and learn in ways that are different from most other people. A nonprofit organization called Acing Autism uses tennis to positively impact children with autism in the Valley. We met Richard Sperling, who is the CEO and founder of Acing Autism back in 2016. I love the program and told him as soon as he's ready to implement the program in Phoenix just to give us a call. Chad and Elena Campbell's son, Ewan, was diagnosed with autism in 2015. Elena says finding activities for their son to participate in was difficult, but Acing Autism provided that opportunity. We have two older children and we have a tennis company of our own, so we wanted to find a place that our son with autism could also enjoy the sport and it could be a fully inclusive game for our family. Acing Autism in Phoenix is also partnered with the Southwest Autism Research and Resource Center, or SARC, a nonprofit organization dedicated to autism research and education. SARC has sent out certified therapists to come and teach the coaches and volunteers best practices, strategies, and techniques when working with kids with autism. Well, Acing Autism's curriculum was built for children on the autism spectrum. The whole idea is to create language and communication opportunities for the children. Tennis is really just the excuse or the vehicle for delivering these opportunities. And it's just great to see a, a grassroots program 
bring in kids that would not normally have the opportunity to play tennis. Chad says when they started acing autism in Phoenix, they had about six kids and six volunteers. A year and a half later, and they had 13 children and 15 volunteers, and they only hope to see it continue to grow. In Phoenix, Ashley Mackey, Cronkite News. The program holds their tennis practices at Arcadia High School. That's it for Cronkite News tonight. Thank you for joining us. For top stories anytime, go to cronkitenews.azpbs.org. right on my bombs. Hitler, here's a gift for you. A gift from us Jews. <laughs> they identified as Jews because they were fighting a people that were trying to destroy the Jewish people from the face of the earth. Tonight at 8.30 on Arizona PBS. Explore new ideas and new worlds here on Arizona PBS, a community service of Arizona State University. Arizona PBS deeply appreciates every gift we receive, and we are proud to honor our executive society. These supporters believe in the mission of public television and are making a real impact in our community. If you would like to join the executive society, please call the number below or log on to azpbs.org to join. Thank you. Coming up next on Arizona PBS, life and world. When you want to be more connected, friend us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter, watch us online. Coming soon to Arizona PBS, How did you first see Gary Ferguson? I see a father figure in him. A search to reunite people after the Vietnam War. You were seven years old. You haven't seen your dad for 43 years. I want to find him and say that I miss him a lot. Tuesday night at 7 on Arizona PBS. It's amazing the fakery that we were able to perpetrate upon the enemy. We could make them believe we were coming in with an armored division. It's the highest kind of creativity in the art of war. Tuesday night at 8 on Arizona PBS. The stock market is Ten down. years after the Great Recession. That took a piece of our soul. Cities like Dayton are still struggling to come back. Dayton is not unique in the problems that we are facing. Well, what is unique is that Dayton is still small enough to fix this. Tuesday night at 9 on Arizona PBS. Support for Arizona PBS comes from